welcome to this gospel rally. The meaning of life was selected from John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 as the theme for this gospel rally because we have seen, we have heard distress calls a world that is unable to fend for itself that chaos, lawlessness has reached a breaking point and men and women are struggling weary to find direction to find meaning to find fulfillment for life the grappling for the meaning in life finds its ultimate rest with the giver and sustainer of that life the person of Jesus Christ it answers the question where does life come from and where does it end up it's not a philosophical question it, uh, it is a question that concerns all of us because it is we are speaking about life itself how to live this life what is the purpose, the meaning, the significance? And the Lord wants us to proclaim so that the world may know life has its source and finding it will bring it fullness of meaning. And I hope that today you will leave this sanctuary with that focus, with that understanding. The search to find the meaning of life finds its end point or the beginning point in Jesus Christ. This is my experience and I'm sharing with you this truth. This search ended for me 26 years ago in a university when the Lord brought a man to instruct me concerning the meaning of life. And this was the passage that was given. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the bible also tells us that this word was made flesh and dwelt among men full of grace and truth. Instantly, I could understand the meaning of life. Before that, no understanding. Life is found in Jesus Christ. Because our text tells us, in Him was life. I was debating with my friends using a book written by the man called Why I'm Not a Christian, written by a man called Bertrand Russell, son of a pastor turned apostate. I confessed my sins and unbelief and repented and received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour. And I never look back except with great, a great sense of gratitude and thanksgiving that the God of heaven will be merciful to me, 
to open my spiritual eyes so that I can know Him personally as my Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, His Son. This is the mystery of godliness, how God came in human flesh, lived a perfect life, and was consigned to the cross. Christ shed his blood to wash away our sins and three days later rose again from the dead to give me eternal life, to give me meaning and to help me to understand the value of life. In our publicity, the one who designed this put a baby there, a most appropriate symbol, symbol of life. Because he is the one that gives life. Without him, outside him, is no life, is deadness, is barrenness. But in him is life. And this is the message that we want to bring to you so that your life, our life, may be put in focus. That if you have Jesus Christ, you have everything. And outside of Him, nothing. Why is it so significant? Because that is the secret to the meaning of life that God had revealed to us so that we may know there was this story given by a late pastor. He said there was someone who was looking in her purse for her keys. She was trying to find her keys. And at first she was looking casually. And then she was looking seriously and frantically. And do you know what she discovered? She was looking in the wrong purse. And this late pastor told his listeners, he says, today I'm here speaking to you and we do not know everything about each other. I do not know everything about you and you do not know everything about me but I do know this much you would like to have a full meaningful fulfilled life am I right he asked I think he says most people feel that way but no matter how much you search you will not find it apart from Jesus Christ. This man has long gone to heaven. He had run his race in his lifetime, pointing men and women to the way of life, to the true way of life, to many a searching soul. And we may say that here in this outreach, we are continuing that spiritual mandate. That's why we took the trouble to organize a gospel meeting like this. That the life that we have received in Jesus Christ, our Lord, may be shared so that others may see and understand and know the meaning, the true meaning of life. Dear friends, we are not talking about breathing, the heart beating, that's life. But we are talking about a rich, abundant life that Christ died in order to give to you. Life, as our text tells us, is in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can give you this life. And I'm here to introduce this 
life that Jesus Christ can give to you. It's time to turn your eyes, as our hymn said, to Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. That's where you will find true meaning and fulfillment. There are three thoughts that we want to think about from our text in uh, John chapter 1, 1 to 4. Three Bs, begetting or beginning, begetting and being. Our text gives to us the beginning of life or the source of life, the beginning of all life, verses 1 to 2. And the begetting, how life came about. We are told that in Him, all life was begotten. Without Him, was not anything begotten. And thirdly, being. If you have Him, you have life. Because He is the giver of life. In Him is life. And we shall try to explain this so that we may fully grasp what we are talking about here. Verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Our writer tells us that in the beginning of no beginning was the Word that was with God. And that was God Himself. This is the Tao in the Chinese thought. The Chinese sought to grappled by her philosophers the way or the truth and they sought to find that that way to life and the Greek described this Tao or the word as the Logos in Greek philosophy the branch of Greek philosophy, this word logos speaks of reason, speaks of understanding, and it is the thought that is used to describe the governing of the universe. This vast created world that we live in there is a reason and understanding for its existence, for its movements, which we need to know. And the Greek philosophers grappling gives this word logos, which John used to describe Jesus Christ, the way the way to life. The Chinese had this similar understanding concerning the way. They call it the way of wisdom. And it is a philosophized term referring to the truth or principle that is believed in order to sustain the physical, the metaphysical the social world. And it is also referring to the journey one follows in life. And so we are talking about a lifetime here. We are talking about life and grappling with its meaning. And that word Tao there includes its method, the style, the manner by which 
one leads a desired course of life. Very deep, isn't it? Indeed. And there are a number of figurative words to describe that way. It's the word road. It's the word for street. And it expressed that same meaning in classical Chinese thinking. The ancient Tao, the way, and the Hebrew word, Derek, the way. And Tao, in Chinese thinking, is primarily a path. And Tao is the path along which once one would walk. Tao Shuo Xing Tao Ye. And by which one reaches one's destination. So the way in which we are to live our life in which we would reach a, particularly, a particular desired destination. So over the thousands of years, in the heart of man, he was seeking. And the Tao exists in the form of knowledge, wisdom knowledge that involves experience, it involves rationality, and insight. And in all traditions, wisdom knowledge has very practical implication. It is supposed to not only increase your intellectual capacity, but also guide people in daily life. Have you ever asked yourself when you wake up in the morning, what am I going to do today? What is the purpose of these activities that I'm going to do for the rest of the day, for the rest of my life? Do you ask yourself these questions before you channel your, channel your energy to what you are doing? Well, we don't want to waste time. The Chinese thought, indeed, says that we need that wisdom and this way is defined as a way of life for people to follow a way of life that is forged in personal and communal environments at the personal level this wisdom this style should think enable one to think and behave in a particular time, in a particular environment, on a specific occasion, and expresses through a series of do's and don'ts. Well, we see this in the scriptures itself. The Bible tells us what we are to do, how we are to live our lives. The Word of God provides us that direction, that instruction. And thinking and behaving wisely. These are the things that we think about, isn't it? As we go through life. We are influenced not only by changing psychological faculties such as our temperament and our emotion, but also other more equitable qualities such as reason and character. So when we speak about the word Tao, the Chinese has that kind of a broad understanding concerning what it means to live life. And they tell us at the communal level, Wisdom becomes a particular way of life, of dealing with a variety of interpersonal relationships, how one treats other people, and the social and natural environment that reflects 
our experience, our knowledge, and influence our vision of life. Tao, in the Chinese thought, appears to be composed of three parts. The Chinese word jie, which is street, shou, which is head, and zu, which is foot, from which we see how this communal life came about in ancient China. The leader, the head, as the pathfinder or the, a pioneer that takes his followers to walk along the path to their destination. And the word head also denotes a self-conscious person. The character Tao brings the way in which an individual follows his or own path of life. So you see how rich that word encompass, it encompass all of life. And in that grappling, John tells us that this Tao is none other than the person Jesus Christ. If you have Jesus Christ, you have everything. So there was a missionary who wrote a particular tract, uh, which I've published in our weekly today, called Focused. And he described to us how life finds its meaning, its true focus, its true fulfillment in Jesus Christ. And why is this so? The writer of the divine revelation described to us. And he tells us in the beginning was the word. And to the Jewish mind, when John proclaimed these words, the Jews are reminded of Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God, and in the beginning, God created. It brings us to the source of life. It brings us to the origin, the beginning, the head of life. Right? That's what we are saying here. And the Lord wants, and, and you see how Man has been grappling for the truth. Thousands and thousands of years. And it is found when God revealed himself to us in the word that was made flesh. And so the Lord wants us to see and understand how life has its beginning in order that we may find that meaning from it. And John is saying to us, not just in the beginning God created, but John is saying to us, in the beginning, even before God created, in eternity past, before there was time, before there was space, he's saying to us that Jesus Christ existed. He was that word. He wants to show to us the truth concerning the true understanding of the makeup of life in this universe. And John is saying to us that in the beginning, in eternity past, in the beginning of no beginnings, God, 
the self-existing one, the uncaused first cause, the giver of life. That was how the jigsaw puzzle of life was put in place. And I do not have to grapple anymore because God revealed it to me. And God gave that heightened understanding through the Spirit of God to understand the truth concerning this life, that it has its beginning and its origin. And the Hebrew mind, when they look at this life, when they speak about it, in the beginning was the Word. Well, they go back to the Old Testament Scriptures. And the Old Testament points out to us that God would manifest himself in a deliverer, in a saviour who would come from heaven. The prophet Isaiah said, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven returneth not hither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may bring, give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I send it. So in the fullness of time, this word became flesh and dwelled among men. This was the beginning that God wants us to understand and see. That this word was the very God himself. And our second thought brings us to the understanding beginning begetting in him all things it is said were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made the greatest statement of truth is that Jesus Christ is the creator of all things if you have understood it, then you have understood the source of life for you. This physical life that you have. You know, it is said that this body of ours, the blood flows unhindered, unimpeded, and we have our life. And the Bible says life is in the blood. The flowing of the blood gives to us life. Can we understand this life? And if there's just one clot somewhere in the arteries, just one little clot, you'll find that life can end just like that. We realize how vulnerable we are. We realize how we are not a master of our life, our destiny. We think that we can move in a certain direction. We think that this is where it is, how it should go. Well, the maker, the giver of life, the one who made us, I want to show us the better way. The way that would bring order to your life. The way that would bring peace and joy and strength to your life. And so here is a great statement of contention that John is bringing before you. And the truth that we must assimilate in our hearts to know who this giver of life is. 
and that we may be focused to understand, to see, to find significance, to find life in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul said, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, through whom and for whom all things were created. So before you were created, it is known in the mind of God that you would come at a certain time in human history, you'll be born. And how much time you have, the end of life is determined for you. This is the giver that we are speaking about. And we want to be right with him. We want to come to know him. We come to, want to come to understand him. And here is described for us what this life is. And we want to help us to see and understand that beginning and then that begetting that you are created with this life in you by a creator that God has bring, brought before you to understand and then the third thought, the beginning, the begetting. We all have life. Right? We could feel in our physical senses life that flows in us, within us, and the communication that comes from us. And then here in verse 4 is given to us a relationship. The being, your being in life, are you connected to the source of life? In him, verse 4 says, was life, and the life was the light of men. Here, this term light is contrasted with darkness. Light was that which came in the beginning when God created. God gave the light. With the light came the life. Man was created last. God brought the light. And then the life, the plants, the animals, the, the flying creatures, the sea creatures, could find its existence. And then God placed men in his existence by this light. And so the Lord wants us to understand the true significance of this light. This light is a description of life. Otherwise, you'd be grappling in darkness. This is the light that gives life. So when Jesus Christ was upon earth, you see that he was able to heal a man that was lame from his birth. The man that has his feet withered. This is he that is able to bring back those dead cells that they may find life again. In him was life. The man that was blind lost his sight, couldn't see through the great physician, finds sight again. Why did God have to manifest such great, miraculous, life-giving power in order to show us this is the source of life. This is where you get 
your life. And God wants us to bring, to bring our life to that focus so that you may know in Him was life and the life was the light of men. And this word light also speaks about direction. It provides for us the wisdom to live life. The psalmist says, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord are pure, enlightening the eyes. When God gives His laws, it brings order to your family because He is the one that instituted marriage, the husband-wife relationship. He was the one that put the family structure in place. He was the one that enabled us to beget children. This is the giver of life, the enactor of life. So we said in our Bible study, have you ever wondered why God created the family? Father, with the son, with the daughter, so that in eternity we may know that we have a heavenly father. We are all his children in eternity, in the family that God places us in, we would be, under, be able to understand by the physical relationship that we have with our father, our physical father, that relationship we have with the father in heaven, who is going to give to us eternity and eternal life in heaven. That's the creator. He is the one that brings order to life. In him was light. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet, a light unto my path. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And so this is the beginning of wisdom. This is the beginning of life in Jesus Christ. And the life that is focused upon Jesus Christ find its true meaning, find its true being, find its true existence, find its true fulfillment. And so Solomon says, for the commandment is a lamb and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So God did not leave us without wisdom, instruction, how we are to live our lives. In fact, that light, that word emanating itself in the person of Jesus Christ provide us that way. And you see that no other man that came upon earth since time immemorial would point the world to him. Except Jesus Christ, who came in the fullness of time. Right? Even our calendar is marked by him, by his coming, BC, before Christ, and AD, Anno Domini, the year of the Lord. The Lord wants us to understand the significance of this. Jesus Christ has power over the sea. The weather was under his auspices. He commanded and the storm stopped. This is God manifesting himself. And the prophet Isaiah says, the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them has the light shined Isaiah 9 verse 2 
This was a prophecy that speaks about the coming of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And in Christmas time, well, we remember how the holy infant came. We sing the Christmas carol, Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. The night is supposed to be darkness. How is it that the person who want to bring to us this understanding share with us concerning this light who Jesus Christ is? He is the light that illumines the dark hearts of men. Silent night, holy night. Son of God's love, pure light. Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawning of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. God, in the fullness of time, sent forth his Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus is special because he is born of a virgin, the Bible says, of a woman's seed. The man's seed is tainted with sin. But Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the woman's seed. Without sin, the sinless Son of God, the Lamb of God that would bring peace to the troubled world, to take away the sin that so beset us and allow us to live a life of strength and peace. This Jesus Christ that came was God's plan that he, the Son of God, would be made the Son of Man, that the sons of men may be made the sons of God. How can we be connected with our Creator, the giver of life? Well, through Jesus Christ. And we are grappling in our darkness without light, because we have not taken hold of Jesus Christ in our life. But if we have taken hold of Him, then you will find being for life. God will give to you life. Light is come to the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might have life. And so what are we doing here? Showing to you the meaning of life in Jesus Christ and how can you obtain it this life is not just a three-dimensional physical being, but there is an eternity, there is an eternal being that is within us, that God has created, not just this physical body, but the soul that is in us, an immortal soul, we are told. And death brings with it us dreadful separation. We all have to die. But where will you go when you die? The Bible tells us that if you know Him, the giver of life, then through Him you will have everlasting life. Absent in the body, present with the Lord. You have that assurance in your heart. 
Do you know where you would be going? Do you know the final destination? The Bible tells us that there are only two destinations. One to the heavenly kingdom and the other through the darkness of eternal hellfire. A place of judgment. And we don't want to be found there. Not one millisecond. How terrible it is, the judgment that comes. And we have a choice today. And that choice is found in Jesus Christ. If you have not received him as your Lord and as your Saviour, I urge you to come to him today. God doesn't want you to go to hell. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That light is come into the world. Jesus Christ. In him is life. Are you connected to him? How can we be connected to him? The Bible says that we can be connected to him by faith in Jesus Christ. By believing in the object that would give us that life, Jesus Christ. He died for our sins and rose again the third day. Jesus Christ is the only one. When he was alive, he was able to bring a dead man to life. Right? You put the best scientists together, they cannot bring life. We are helpless, we are hopeless. But this is the giver of life. If you are connected to him, you have life. And the Lord wants you, God wants you to have a fullness of life, fullness of meaning. What we have to do is to come before him and acknowledge that we are unable to lead our life by our own effort, by our own wisdom, by our own strength, we are helpless. Only when we call to Jesus are we able to find wisdom and life and connection for life. We need to come before him confessing our need of him, repenting of our waywardness, of our sins, and acknowledging him as the giver of life, and that he had died for our sins, that he has washed our sins by his blood that was shed on the cross of, at Calvary. And three days later, he rose from the dead. This is the power of the resurrection. This is the power that would enable you to overcome sin in your life. This is the power that, would ab that is able to, you, to enable you to get out of depression. To help you to find rest for your life. To find peace for your life. To find joy. To find meaning. To find significance. To find life itself. And we thank God. I thank God that he revealed his truth to us. And there are those who care enough for us 
to show us the way to life. Thank God. Thank God. May the Lord bless His word to the strengthening of the hearts of His people. Beginning, begetting, being. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to bring before you our own souls. And Lord, we thank thee for the connection that we can receive through Jesus Christ. The source and giver of life. Lord, may thou show forth this life to someone, some seeking soul in the midst of this sanctuary, those who are hearing in from our webcast. Lord, we pray that thou would help this seeking soul to be surrendered fully, wholly, thoroughly to Jesus Christ that he may indeed be the Lord and Saviour of such a life. O Lord, we thank thee for the abundant life, the life that comes, that enables us to overcome sin, to say no to sin. O God, we thank thee for that power, the power of the resurrection that is in us, in all who take hold of Jesus Christ, by faith, Lord, may thou bless and strengthen the life of thy people here, that indeed they may find renewed strength with a renewed focus on Jesus Christ. This I ask and pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.